What's up guys, this is Lance with Fire Alarm Help, and this is a non-brand specific overview about conventional power supplies and how to trigger them. And I'm gonna say my best practice opinion over how to wire them. Remember, this is non-brand specific. So once you get what I'm talking about, look at the, the manual for the power supply. It will tell you how to do this. Just follow the dots, connect the dots, it, it will tell you. You know, or I'll call uh, sales support. Not sales support, I'll, you know, I'll call tech support and they'll tell you how to do it, no big deal. But this is the overview. So what is it? Um, every All the lights and the sounds, all the notification, has uh, to flash at the same time. It's code, and you also don't want to screw with people that suffer from epilepsy. You know, it's it's kind of, it is important. Out of everything Fire Alarm does, this is one of the important things, besides getting people out of the building. You want them to get out and be able to walk. So, um, so what is it? So, everything's got to flash at the same time, but you have a fire panel, and not everything can come from that fire panel. It's only got so much power. So you have power supplies. You have a, a box with power that can handle a lot of devices. And, you know, buildings normally have more than a few. So the fire panel will have a wire to conductor, and it will have the master sync signal. It will go from the panel to the power supply, or it will go in daisy chain all the power supplies. Um... When the main panel goes off, it has the master sync signal. All the other ones will copy it, having all of them flash and sync. This, um, it triggers, it makes, it functions off of DC voltage. They're polarity sensitive, so if voltage flows one way, positive. The devices, the power supplies will go off. If it flows negatively, it will not go off. So in theory, you could, not in theory, you can, you, know, you can take um, the battery you know, and jump them off the batteries and trigger a power supply. So, something about, but don't, you know, that's brand specific, be cool. Not from this video. Um, so anyways, what, what was I at? So that's overview of what it does. Well, let's talk about best practice. What is Lance's opinion, best practice? So again, you're, again, you're the product manual for the power supply will tell you in detail how to do this. And tech support will also tell you how to do this. Um, but, this is the way. So everything in fire alarms got to be supervised. All the wiring, everything. That's why the smokes have numbers. That's why wires have resistors. Everything's got to be power uh, supervised. But Lance, what about class E and class D? Yes, I know. I'm not talking about that right now. It's not important. So, for, and for this example, we're going to talk about class B. Class A is just a circle. So this needs a class B. We're talking about class B. So how it's typically wired. You want to supervise the trigger and you want the trigger to just be for triggering the power supplies. So from the main panel, you have the wire, which you'll know from the manual what gauge you can use from, the, from all that, what the brand can accept. Typically it's 16 gauge or 14 gauge, but you got the 18, you got the two conductor from the main panel. It'll go to the first power supply and it will daisy chain to the last power supply and it will land you know it lands on the little input stuff and you'll have a resistor stacked on the red and black at the end this supervises the whole trigger if anything goes in trouble or anything it doesn't affect the trigger the trigger if it fires all the power supplies fire so but lance how do you supervise the power supply well not with the damn trigger so you get slc you get a mini module and you get it you get one in each power supply and you have that monitor the trouble contacts. So if something happens in the power supply, you have a description of third floor power supply. It doesn't, cause otherwise guys, if you supervise the power supplies with the trigger, you'll have one trouble and it will say bell open circuit. And you won't know which power supply it is. And honestly, the difference is, is one is a, hey bro, you need to change your batteries on the third floor no big deal, we can get to that Monday. Or, hey, your notification is down. Most of it's down because you have it. You have the trigger supervising all your power supplies and the power supply opened the trouble contact, opening the trigger. And then now everything downstream doesn't work. So that's, that's why you don't do that. Um, so that's, in my opinion, best case, best practice. That's the overview. Um, yeah, so now real quick before I wrap this up, 
what is the, if you do this, you deserve to go to hell thing. So don't do this. You deserve to go to hell, special place in hell for you. Panel, bell circuit, device, 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 strobe, 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 a circuit. And then it ends on a power supply as a trigger. So the resistor's right there. It's the end of line as a trigger. Yes, technically that's legal. But there's a special place in hell for you because if something happens with a device, the rest of the, the that power supply won't fire because it opens the circuit. Because again, everything's got to be supervised. So the devices are designed to open the circuit if you undo it or something unsnaps. So now some kind sometimes you have to do that fine have good as built the best you can and you still should have a mini module monitor the power supply so that the, if the power supply goes in trouble you'll know so hope you hope you guys found this helpful remember once you get the overview um check your own the, the manual for the power supply it'll have this drawn or call tech support and i'm going to do brand specific stuff but this is the overview hope you found it helpful this is lance with fire alarm help have a good day Thanks.